previously in Starlight Exodus. I'd like to recommend you both for an early military training program here on Mars. Alert! Multiple seismic readings near Elysium Mons. Soldiers stationed at the outpost were already mobilizing, their faces pale as they watched the massive creature advancing toward them. Mars mechs, towering machines built for heavy lifting and occasional combat, began moving into defensive positions. Their operators adjusted their targeting systems, focusing on the beast's joints, hoping to slow it down. Captain Myra Vasquez barked orders into her helmet's mic. I want all heavy artillery on that thing's limbs. Aim for the glowing eyes too. It's our only shot at taking it down. The outposts and mech's weapons fired, but the creature barely flinched. Its carapace absorbed the blows, as if the artillery shells were nothing more than dust. The beast roared again, and with a swift, devastating swipe of one of its serrated limbs, it sent a mech crashing into a nearby ridge. Everyone, hold the line. Captain Vasquez watered, though her voice betrayed her fear. But even as the soldiers fought valiantly, the ground continued to shift. The cracking earth gave way beneath the outpost, and parts of the terrain began to sink into the dark, mysterious depths below. Dr. Karen Halls and Dr. Dave Brin stood in stunned silence. The alarm's relentless blare echoing through the facility. For a brief moment, it seemed the entire room had frozen, paralyzed by the enormity of the footage they'd just witnessed. On the screen, the massive creature towered over the Martian outpost, its bioluminescent eyes glowing like eerie stars against the dull red surface of Mars. The ground trembled as it moved, as though the planet itself was reacting to the beast's presence. Dr. Halls grabbed her comms device, her fingers trembling slightly. All units! We need a tactical response team on site immediately! Get those people out of there! Full evacuation protocols, no hesitation! Dr. Brin, his face pale but determined, pulled up another screen displaying seismic data. The Paleo Ocean. It wasn't just a legend. It's beneath us and it's waking up. We've only seen the beginning. He muttered, his voice shaking. As the ground continued to tremble, deep cracked spider webbed across the Martian soil. The enormous creature bore down on the outpost, its glowing eyes locking onto the Mars necks in front of it. Each step it took shook the ground, sending tremors through the soldiers' feet and causing loose equipment to rattle. Captain! the ground! It's giving way! A young soldier shouted from behind a barricade, his voice filled with panic. Captain Vasquez's brow furrowed beneath her helmet. She could feel the same thing, a deep, unsettling sensation, as though the planet itself was coming alive. But there was no time to dwell on that. Focus on the target! We can't let this thing destroy the outpost! She barked. The Mars mechs continued their assault, lasers, and ballistic rounds firing at the creature's joints and eyes. Occasionally, a shot hit its glowing orbs, causing it to stagger briefly, but it was far from enough to bring it down. The creature's serrated limbs slashed through the air with lethal precision, knocking aside another mech like a toy and sending it crashing against the rocks. Sparks flew as metal crunched and twisted. Captain Vasquez! The ground beneath the outpost! It's sinking into some kind of cavern! We need to evacuate! A voice over the communication. His tone was urgent. Mira's heart sank. She glanced over her shoulder and saw it. Half of the outpost was beginning to crumble, structures toppling as the earth beneath them collapsed. Soldiers were scrambling to pull civilians out of buildings and load them into evacuation vehicles. The entire area was on the verge of being swallowed whole. 
Pull back! All units fall back to secondary defensive positions. Evacuation teams, prioritize civilian extraction. Vasquez ordered. As her words echoed across the calm, soldiers and men pilots reluctantly began to retreat. The Mars Mets took one last volley of the creature before shifting into retreat mode, their heavy limbs stunking towards safer ground. The creature, undeterred, surged forward. With a roar that sent chills down every spine, it lunged at one of the retreat mechs, sinking its serrated claws into the metal and tearing it apart like paper. The pilot inside barely had time to scream before the machine exploded in a shower of sparks and flame. Fall back faster! Mira shouted as she watched the scene unfold. Her breathing quickened. She couldn't lose more people not like this. But just as it seemed, all hope was lost. A new sound cut through the chaos. A low hum, followed by the screeching of metal as a towering Mars mech, larger than the others, stepped onto the battlefield. This one was different, built for extreme combat. Its armor gleamed under the dim Martian sky, and its weapons hummed with barely contained power. Captain Vasquez! Came a voice through her communication. It was Major Hartley, the pilot of the massive combat mech. We're not letting this thing take our home. Focus all remaining units on evacuation. I'll handle this big one. Roger that, Major. Do what you need to do. Mira hesitated, then nodded. The ground continued to quake as the outpost crumbled further into the collapsing ground. But Major Hartley's mech stood firm its weapon systems locking onto the creature's form. With a roar of defiance, the mech opened fire, energy being searing through the Martian air and slamming into the beast's thick carapace. The creature recoiled, its glowing eyes flashing with fury as it turned its attention to the massive combat mech. It charged, roaring again, but Hartley's mech didn't alter. The two titans clashed, metal and monster, as soldiers and civilians hurriedly evacuated the sinking outpost behind them. Mira watched from the retreating line, her heart pounding. She couldn't shake the feeling that this battle was only the beginning. Something much darker and deeper was stirring beneath Mars's surface, something that even their strongest weapons couldn't stop. At the Martian Military Academy, Jean and Simon were tasked with mastering drone flight technology deemed too young for direct combat operations. Their training would focus on piloting and controlling advanced drones, which played a critical role in Mars's defense strategies. As they dove into the program, the Academy's strict instructors pushed them to their limits, emphasizing the importance of precision, quick decision-making, and teamwork. Despite the initial challenges, Jean and Simon excelled in their training developing a natural synergy with the drones. The technology was cutting edge, equipped with advanced AI and multi-purpose capabilities, perfect for reconnaissance, combat support, and even search and rescue missions. The boys quickly realized that their roles, while not directly on the battlefield, could still shape the future of Mars's defense. Their training was not without risks. The Academy frequently conducted real-world simulations in hostile environments, exposing the cadets to the unpredictable Martian terrain and potential threats that had become a significant danger to the colony. While on a training mission, Jean and Simon's drone squadron was dispatched to investigate unusual seismic activity near a remote Martian outpost. Well, at least we won't be on the front lines. His voice a mix of relief and disappointment. Trust me, Simon, we'll still be making a difference. These drones, they're crucial to the battle. They map the terrain, spot possible alien life forms, and even deliver supplies to soldiers in need. We'll be right in the action, just from a distance. Jin added. The Academy instructor, Commander Drake, approached them with his usual stern demeanor. He was a seasoned Martian officer with deep-set eyes, known for his no-nonsense approach. He nodded at Jean and Simon before gesturing to a large drone parked nearby, its sleek body reflecting the Martian sun. This, this is the Peregrine model.
top of the line, agile, durable, and equipped with state-of-the-art surveillance and defense systems. Commander Drake said, You two will be learning to pilot these over the next few weeks. After that, you'll be running real missions. Simon glanced at the drone, then back at Commander Drake. Real missions? We're not even allowed to engage in battle. What can we do from here? Drake smirked. <laughs> Plenty. Drone pilots are the eyes and ears of our forces. You'll be scouting for potential enemies and other possible life forms, identifying and, if necessary, using the Peregrine's light artillery to hold them off until reinforcements arrive. It's not glamorous, but it's vital. Jin grinned. Sounds good to me. Commander Drake activated his own control unit, and the drone beside them lifted effortlessly into the air. All right, let's get started. I want you both in the air by the end of the day. Pay close attention. Your lives and the lives of many others could cool depend on what you learn here. The day passed in a blur of simulations, tutorials, and practice runs. Jean and Simon quickly got the hang of controlling the drones, maneuvering them through tight spaces, dodging simulated enemy fire, and using their cameras to scan for threats. As night fell, the two of them stood on the Academy's observation deck, overlooking the vast Martian landscape. In the distance, they could see the dust rising from the battlefront, where soldiers clashed with the relentless monster crabs. Jean and Simon knew that tomorrow, their skills would be put to the test. You think we're ready? Simon asked, his voice barely audible over the wind. Jin nodded, his gaze fixed on the horizon. We have to be. Just then, their wrist control units buzzed, signaling a priority message. Commander Drake's voice came through, firm and clear. Jean, Simon, report to the hangar immediately. We've got an urgent assignment for you. There's been an attack on one of our outposts near Elysium Mont, and we need reconnaissance immediately. Suit up. Jean and Simon exchanged a glance, their hearts racing. This was it, their first real mission. Without hesitation, they ran to the hangar, ready to take to the skies and help protect the colony they now called home. 